Welcome to Arena. I'm Will Wheaton. And I'm Travis Oates. Tonight, Arena comes to you from the Dunes Hotel in fabulous Las Vegas, Nevada. Unfortunately, our budget will only allow us to show you our set. However, the action will be as exciting as always as Team Iron makes their sixth appearance on Arena, taking on Team Dev Null in Tactical Ops, Mech Warrior 4 Black Knight, and Dead or Alive 3. Our scoring system is slightly less complicated than the rules for Baccarat, and it breaks down like this. Did I say that right? I have no idea. In each match, there are five possible points to be won. Each match is broken up into three games, which are broken up into three rounds. The team which wins the most points will advance to the next match. Points are awarded based on the following criteria. Each game is worth one point. The team with the most total accumulated kills will win one point, And the team with the most valuable player will win the final point. If you missed any of that, just ask your cocktail waitress for a quick review. And for the love of God, people, will you tip her, please? She's working hard for you. <laughs> cocktail. Before we start our first game, let's meet our players. My name is Andy Lee. I'm from uh, El Monte, California. My name's going to be uh, Maniac. Uh, my name is Alan Maddox, and the nickname that I'm going to be playing with today is uh, Malenko. Hi, my name is Brent Houston. I play as Raven. My name's Kalen Keir, I play as GLC. My name is Spencer Yaris, and I play as Six Hole. My name is Jim Macy, and my nick is uh, Tyler D. Uh, my name is Kevin O'Brien, and I play with uh, Agent Smith. My name is John, and I play under the uh, handle Mayhem. You know, if you added Sammy Davis Jr. Jr., they'd be a modern day Rat Pack. Yeah. Vegas has totally gone to your head. Yes, it has. Uh, okay. Will you be joining me for the buffet after the show? <laughs> you have to ask? I mean, come on. Just wanted to be polite. Let's take a look at our first game, Tactical Ops. Tonight's arena is a hostage rescue arena called Dragon. One. Round one starts with Maniac for Team Iron. Here are Six Hole and Mayhem for Dev Null. You know, that's an old Chinese proverb. Wherever you have a six hole, you'll find a mayhem. I think I got that on a fortune cookie. <laughs> All right, Six Hole has uh, been cut down by Maniac, and I'm really sorry. I'm not going to have to say Six Hole anymore. Can I say Six Hole? I, I wish you wouldn't. All right, I won't. Uh, here's Maniac for Iron. He's taking a swim in pursuit of Agent Smith. Agent Smith takes out Maniac, and Maniac does what the kids call the dead man's float. Mm, nice for him. Yeah. Here's Tyler D for Dev. No, sneaks around the corner. Tyler D, isn't that from Fight Club? Best movie ever. Okay, well, he's oh, dead now. Raven cuts him in half. I am Jack's wasted effort. Thank you, Captain Obscurity. You're welcome. Dev Null's last surviving member, Mayhem, is uh, sparring off with Raven. Raven oh. cuts him down, winning the round for Iron by elimination. I'm ready to roll. Okay, good. Team Dev Null is on the move as we begin round two. They're sticking together as they leave their spawn site, and Six Hole splits off from the rest of his team. I really, really like the name Six Hole, Travis. Yeah, GLC has stayed to uh, entertain the hostages. Oh, that's very thoughtful of him. A little as puppet a show, maybe. Maniac shoots Tyler D in the back. I am Jack's humiliating death. Oh, good. More Fight Club. That's right. Hey, you're um, not a special snowflake. Maniac takes out Mayhem there and jumps into the water. Well, you know, a little swim there to clean out the karma. Six Hole and Agent Smith have made their way into the hostage house and they have picked up all of the hostages and now they gotta get them back to their spawn site in order to uh, win this round. Cleans up the karma. Yeah, maybe you should clean out your karma, mister. Hey. Turns out that uh, they're encountering no resistance at all and uh, Dev Null wins this round. <laughs> Three. Party time. Tyler D takes a break from Project Mayhem, catches up with the rest of his team as we begin round three. Here's Malenko splitting off from the rest of Team Iron as they fan out in hopes of stopping Dev Null. Tyler D, Agent Smith, and I'm pretty sure that's Mayhem, head across the rooftops near the hostage house. Hello. Agent Smith has found Team Iron, and he backs off to let Tyler D take points. Oh, that's a great idea, because Tyler D's had such success in the previous two oh, rounds. Oh, that's mean. I kid because I love. Kyler crosses into the hostage house, and he finds himself staring at two Team Iron defenders. They take him out. I am Jack's target practice. Oh, lovely. Dev Null's in trouble. They only have one man left, and it sounds like Iron's found him. Yeah, they certainly have. That's six hole. Backed into a corner. Six oh. hole. Go down and iron wins. Good job. Okay. Here we go, guys. 
You ready to go? She was like, there's like this one, like pea shooter or something. I don't even. I didn't even. I couldn't tell if it was just air or paintballs or what. I didn't see any paintballs. So. But it was weak. I think I would have done more damage if I threw rocks. Iron takes our first game point, two rounds to one, even though they didn't play their best game. Yeah, Iron kind of surprised me in this game. Um, as you pointed out, hostage rescue maps really favor the hostage takers, in this case, Team Iron. Uh, they didn't really need to take an offensive posture, but we saw them do just that in all three rounds. Yeah, in round two, the only round Devnol won, GLC and Maniac really got cut out of position for their team. If they just hung back and waited for Devnol to show up, they probably would have taken all three rounds. Are, are you suggesting that they camp? No, I was thinking that they should defend the hostage house. Right, by camping. No, if they had picked defensive positions and they had Camper. stayed there, what I'm trying to say okay, is that they- Okay, campy McCamp, camp. You know what, maybe I should camp you. All right, go ahead to do that, camper. I'm going to watch the pirate ship sink. <laughs> Why don't you do that? Yo ho and ho. Well, after one game, Iron is up by one. We'll see if Dev Null can even the score when Arena returns. Bye-bye. Welcome back to Arena. Teams Iron and Dev Null played a great game in Tactical Ops. Now we'll take our players out of Chinatown and transport them to the musical and futuristic world of MechWarrior 4 Black Knight. Our arena tonight is called Timberline. One. We will start round one with Maniac for Team Iron as he leaves his base and heads out. Here's Agent Smith for Dev Null running down the hill there. And there's Raven, who's uh, in, a, in a, a mech. It's a Raven-style mech. How about that? Well, for Team go. Iron. <laughs> Mayhem and Agent Smith, meanwhile, are following Maniac uh, as, oh, he uses his jump jets to avoid shots from Tyler D. Tyler D is shooting at Maniac as he flies through the air there. But Maniac comes down and picks up the uh, blue flag. Sneaking his way out of Team Dev Null's base as Tyler D is using just about every weapon he has against Maniac. Tyler D's on the move now as he forces Maniac to take to the air once more. He shoots those long-range missiles at him, but they sail a bit wide of their mark. Maniac comes down here just on the other side of that hill. Now, maybe he can use those trees to shake off Tyler D or... Uh -oh. Oh, oh, wait a minute. He's got bigger problems. Uh, Agent Smith has found Maniac and he gives chase. Agent Smith isn't really hitting Maniac with any real effectiveness. Uh, my, oh, oh, hello. Well, that one shot was all he needed as Maniac is brought down. All right, now that flag is on a timed return, which means that uh, it's not gonna go any place. Agent Smith can head up there and guard it. Whoa, never mind. Here's Malenko for Team Iron who comes in and picks up the flag. Uh, Malenko and Agent Smith go toe to toe to to toe to toe to toe, and Whoa. Tell he destroys Agent Smith with some help from GLC. <laughs> wow, looks like the heat from that explosion caused a coolant dump from Malenko and his mech powered down. Uh, now he dropped the flag, and it doesn't look like he realizes that yet. Wait a second, he's either just realized he doesn't have it or he's carving Malenko was here into that tray. Oh, it's too bad we're not on one of those snowy arenas. <laughs> oh. <laughs> All right, he has figured out obviously because he's gone back there and picked up the uh, Team Dev Null flag. Yeah. Just what would he do in a snowy environment? I'm uh, he'd carve his name into the snow. Uh, he heads off down the mountainside towards his own base. Just outside Team Iron's base, GLC is trying to hold off Mayhem yeah, so Malenko but, can score. But without any effectiveness, Mayhem heads down after Malenko. Flag Malenko return. calls in and scores as time runs out. This guy's good, man. He must not have a girlfriend. <laughs> got way too much time playing this oh. game, man. Two. Here is a lovely group photo opportunity of Team Dev Null to begin round two. Say Arena, everybody. Arena. Raven heads out for Iron, and uh, Mayhem is on the move for Dev Null. Raven has made it to the blue base where Tyler D is defending. Oops. Uh, Raven zigzags around some of Tyler D's shots. Doesn't look very worried, does he? Yeah, you know, uh, he gives him a few shots all. of his own <laughs> uh, and picks up the blue flag right Yo, in front yeah, of and him. And then he runs right into him as Tyler D angrily shoots all of his weapons into the ground. Travis, I have to say it again, Raven is really good. Meanwhile, Mayhem, who's a master of the locked on LRM, delivers some serious damage is. to GLC, who has a long range uh, damage master in his own right. Raven continues his sprint across the valley towards his own base. The valley? What? I know. Yeah. Did you say the valley? Well, you know why? It's because I went to Bally's earlier today before we came up here to our own casino. I see. All right. He uh, heads into his own base and scores as time runs out. Hey. 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 Three. 
Ladies and gentlemen, Agent Smith. Nice Vegas entrance. <laughs> it's lovely. Uh, here is Six Hole making a more of a boring Siegfried and Roy entrance, and <laughs> GLC also making kind of a Lance Burton entrance. Oh, look, and here's oh, Raven already having the Dev Null's flag. <laughs> He heads into the center of the valley and gets oh. blasted by Mayhem's Goss Cannons. Wow. Can we have said any of the people that we just said? No, I don't think okay, so. Well, that that shot fine. really counted, and Raven is hurt. Here is Six Hole running into Team Fly. Iron's base, Fly. picking Fly. up Fly. a red flag. Fire. My foot's on fire. <laughs> well, he uses his jump jets to get away from the Team Iron defenders, and Malenko scores a nice mid-air hit on him. Here's Raven still limping along with the blue flag, taking some LRM fire from Mayhem. Oh, oh, oh he just what happened? He just exploded. Oh, my, he must have self-destructed so the undamaged GLC can pick up the flag and continue oh, on the way back to the smart. base. That is very That is smart. amazing teamwork. It's stuff like that that has caused Iron to win five mounds already. And shooting like that probably helps too. <laughs> yeah. That was Malenko up there on the mountain, by the way, I think. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that was. GLC continues to make his way um, slowly and backwards uh, back to his base for Team Iron. He's taking massive amounts of long-range damage from Mayhem and, and Agent Smith. And he does know there's a time limit here, right? Uh, apparently not, because he's not turning around as the entirety of Team Dev Null continues to rain damage down on him. GLC must be just made of armor. I guess so. Now, uh, here comes Agent Smith. Uh, Agent Smith and GLC are both very heavy mechs, so uh, this should be interesting. And Agent Smith is closing the gap between the two of them right now and getting ready to... Oh, dump a Gauss cannon point blank right into GLC. Both of these mechs are seriously damaged. Not even ramming him. They're just angry. Oh, oh, both mechs are destroyed, and there's Raven again! Raven comes in and picks up the flag for Don't Iron. celebrate yet, though, because fast. time is Time's running, out, running out. out. And time runs oh. out. Oh. Ooh. Hey, are all zeros good? Zen perfection. <laughs> the idea is, is that as soon as we drop their flag off at our base, we have somebody else to pick it up and start moving it back. That way, you know, it just gets a, a train tread going. You just get it going and try to try and win as many flags as possible. It's just flag ball. What would you do differently this time? Not um, play. I'd probably somehow get three of those guys into the bathroom and beat them unconscious <laughs> um, before the round. Well, time runs out on a really tremendous round before either team can score. So, this round will go to the team with the most kills. While our crack team of statisticians works that out, I want to talk about the incredible teamwork of Team Iron. No kidding. Both teams played extremely well in all three rounds, but Iron's teamwork was just amazing. In round one, we've got Malenko picking up Maniac's dropped flag. In round two, you've got the entire team supporting Raven. And speaking of Raven, oh my god, in round three, Raven has the flag and is nearly destroyed. He's taking heavy long-range missile fire from Dev Null, so he summons his teammate GLC and self-destructs so the undamaged GLC can take the the flag back to their base. That death is going to count against Raven's MVP points, so I am very, very impressed with his commitment to his team. Now, Team Devnall, they had some impressive moments as well. Mayhem showcased some amazing targeting skills, scoring tons of direct hits with locked-on missiles. And getting missile lock is not an easy thing to do, especially when your mech is on the move and you're taking fire from an opponent. Uh, do we have that score yet? Uh, yes, yes. Turns out our interns were all in the casino, but huh. we have the result. <laughs> Round three will go to Team Devnall. Dev Null, who had three kills. And apparently there's match play on single deck blackjack. I'm gonna be back. Uh, he hello, we're doing a show. Okay, so I'll just leave me here to run the show on my, on my own. Hi, I'm Travis Outs and I'll be your host this week on Arena. Dude, As we just wrote a commercial. Wheaton, don't tell me how to do my job. Fine, we'll be right back. Welcome back to Arena. This week, Travis and I are coming to you live from fabulous Las Vegas, Nevada. We are so live. Hey, how did you do at the blackjack table? Well, let's just say that I got a comped room and a comped buffet. How much did you have to gamble to get that? $22,000. $22,000 for a $65 room and an $18 buffet. You know you? You are what they call a winner. Well, speaking of winning, mm -hmm. Team Iron has won both of our games so far tonight, so Team Devnall really has their work cut out for them. Yeah, they have to win all three remaining points to claim victory tonight, starting with our next game point in Dead or Alive 3. One. 
Here is Malenko as Helena for Team Iron and six hole as Kasumi for Dev Null as we begin round one. Helena comes out strong. Of course, Helena has a little bit more uh, experience here at Dead or Alive Arena. Yeah, uh, because the last episode of Arena, uh, uh, Malenko had some experience uh, getting his butt kicked yes. through the entire game. You know what I love about this game more than anything else? No matter what happens, you're going to see a girl go down. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's, that's very true. See, look at that there. Helena goes down. Oh, and Kasumi goes down to end round one. Two. We start round two with Helena up by one. You know, I've got to say Malenko's playing much better this round uh, than he did the last time we were in Arena. You know, if we could just keep the guys out of this and only refer to the girls, it makes Dead or Alive 3 much more interesting for me. Okay. The tall blonde girlie's doing much better than she did the last time she Thank was in you, Arena. Thank you, I appreciate that. I'm very impressed with Kasumi's uh, flip there. Oh, wow, they go down to the second level. Helena throws Kasumi off the wall there, and uh, that's the end of Kasumi, Travis. Off the wall or off the cliff? Off the, that could have been a cliff. Oh, wait, she's talking. What? Three. Helena is working on the shutout as we begin round three. She is up two rounds to none as Kasumi comes out strong right out of the box. You know, I think the reason Kasumi's doing so poorly, the bobby socks. You know, it's not so much about the fighting, really, as uh, about how good you look. Exactly, the coordinated outfits. It's really nice there. Uh, it's Kasumi really just getting hammered by Helena here. Helena puts the double combo on her there and sends her down. Wow, it could be anybody's game. It's very and close. And Helena wins. Four. We start out with Helena up 3-2-0. Boy, Kasumi's got to get something going here. She's going to be out of this game post-haste. Well, Kasumi sends Helena over the cliff onto the lower level. Last time we were down here, Helena really just took Kasumi right out of the round. Yeah, Kasumi keeps starting out strong, but Helena keeps coming back right at the end. Or maybe not this well, time. Well, maybe not this time with a seven-hit combo delivered by Kasumi. That oh, was just brutal. Helena comes Helena right back. in. Oh! Helena not only sends Kasumi to the ground there, but then, just for good measure, right off the edge of the cliff to gloat over the victory. That's right, in my trailer. Five. We begin round five with Helena up, four to nothing. If uh, Helena wins this round, Kasumi falls victim to the shutout, and uh, Team Iron takes this point. Kasumi is holding on to this game with pink fingernails and cotton panties. Are you sure her fingernails are pink? Uh, no, I haven't got up that close. I wasn't actually looking at her hands. Yeah, me neither. Well, she is delivering uh, severe hits to Helena because, oh! oh, she sends Helena right down there. Uh, Kasumi must have realized that the game was on the line here because she came back and uh, takes this round. Six. And we start round six, four to one for Helena. Uh, Kasumi came back last round. What she do you certainly think, Will? did. Well, I think that she showed that she really knows how to handle herself in this game and definitely has the ability to, to make Helena work for a victory. She might want to show that in this round, though. <laughs> yeah, because, no kidding. Uh, everything's on the line here. Helena comes back against Kasumi. This is Kasumi's putting the hurt on Helena, but those those hits aren't really counting for much because Helena's blocking them fairly effectively. That's it. Helena takes it all. It's all over, folks. Helena wins in Dead or Alive 3. The girl on girl fighting has come to an end. Wow, Malenko just owned in that game. Yeah, simply incredible. This is the direct opposite of the last time Malenko played in Dead or Alive 3, yeah. where he played uh, Kasumi. He only won one round. Yeah, uh, Six Hole put up a good fight, but that game was all Malenko, and Team Iron is going to take our third and final game point. Way to go, Team Iron. You know, I started out really hating Dead or Alive 3, but over the last few matches, it's really grown on me. It's a pretty cool game. Well, that's great. Um, unfortunately, uh, we won't be using it anymore. Uh -huh. What? Why? Well, it turns out we offended some people. <laughs> what, what could possibly be offensive about watching two hot chicks dressed up in schoolgirl outfits fight each other? Besides the obvious. Yeah, yeah, besides that. <sighs> well, we're going to miss you, Dead or Alive 3. Yeah. Let's take a look at our arena scoreboard and see who's going to spend the night in the high roller suite and who's going to end up at the Motel Craptastic downtown with me and Travis. Ah! 
Team Iron took our first game point in Tactical Ops. Team Iron also took our second game point in Mech Warrior 4. Team Iron gets three Jokers and the jackpot by taking our third and final game point in Dead or Alive 3. And shock of shockers, our total accumulated kills point goes to Team Iron 19 to 6. They're like the 72 Dolphins of Arena. Sure they are. So, Iron is going to win tonight's match for sure, but let's see if they can get that MVP point also. To find out who our MVP is, we look at all our players' kill-to-death ratios and add in any objectives they've secured, like rescuing a hostage, capturing a flag, or scoring a perfect victory in Dead or Alive 3. Once we have those numbers, we write them on a Kino card. We then give that Kino card to a runner. She takes it to a well-connected pit boss, who then hands it to a trained monkey named Mr. Biggles. And he brings back the card with her MVP and a chance to win a million dollars! Tonight's MVP is... Thank you, Mr. Biggles. Oh, Mr. Biggles likes well. Malenko from Team Iron. As a uh, member of Team Iron and playing on Arena, uh, my advice to new players would pretty much be just what everyone else has been saying. It's, it's really about knowing the game, knowing the game play, knowing the maps, knowing how different types of games within that game is played, you know, and just knowing what type of skills you have as a player and how to use that towards the team as effectively as possible. Well, congratulations to Malenko and Team Iron. They win all five arena points and their sixth match, which means that they are retired to the Arena Hall of Champions. Great job, you guys. Now that Iron is retired, we're looking for new teams. If you think you have what it takes to compete in the arena and you're going to be in the Los Angeles area, log into our website at g4tv.com slash arena. And remember, people, always split aces and eights, always bet on black, and none of this is real. These are all 3D models in a computer game. For Travis Oates, I'm Will Wheaton. We'll see you next time in the arena.